what made the Bush administration? I mean, you know, George Bush came into office, and for the first nine months that he was president, there was a pretty broad consensus across the United States that this guy was not actually elected president. That he was that he, he was handed this on a silver platter by the U.S. Supreme Court by shutting down the uh, recount that was ordered by the Florida Supreme Court, and and there was actually a consortium of news agencies that were recounting the Florida ballot to find out what actually happened. Nobody knew. He didn't, you know, he was kind of wandering around looking kind of sad. I mean, you look at the inauguration. It was no big deal. It was kind of rainy and gray. And it's, a, it's like, you know, it was just, eh. this guy, he was nothing. He was an illegitimate president. Turns out, actually, when they counted all the ballots, they found that by any measure, over vote, under vote, pimpled Chad, dimpled Chad, hanging Chad, pregnant Chad, any, any, by any measure, Al Gore won more votes, votes in Florida than George W. Bush did. But the Supreme Court put an end to that recount. It had to be done a year later. And the results came out, of course, in November, which was a month after 9-11. So all the news media basically buried the result that George Bush wasn't actually the legitimate president of the United States, that it was Al Gore. Al Gore knows this. I know this. You know this. I mean, the New York Times knew it. They wrote it, but they buried it in the 17th paragraph in the story. And the story didn't run on page one. But all that aside, the thing that made the Bush presidency, that suddenly George Bush's popularity went from, like, in the total tank, nobody, nobody thought this guy was a decent president or anything else. The thing that went from him, him being nobody to him being, you know, having some of the highest popularity ratings since Franklin Roosevelt or Jack Kennedy was 9-11. You know, standing on that pile of rubble with that bullhorn with his arm around that firefighter who had been spending three days inhaling asbestos and, and, and making himself sick, and then the Bush administration refused to, for, for seven more years, refused to fund these guys' cancer fund, but set, set that aside. Bush standing there with that bullhorn with that poor guy who, you know, was soon to get sick, or at least he, his colleagues, I don't know, his individual story. I mean... The Obamas were there this morning for the opening of 9-11. The Clintons were there. Both Bill and Hillary. They were there. I thought 9-11 was this big Republican thing, right? They got the Patriot Act out of it. They got, you know, $2 trillion worth of military spending out of it. They got Bush got reelected, you know, based on it by extending the, the wars in Afghanistan and, and, and uh, Iraq. I mean, he had, he had told Mickey Herskowitz, his biographer, back in 1999, before he had even announced that he was running for president, when, when Mickey was writing the first draft of A Charge to Keep, George Bush's autobiography, he told his ghostwriter that if he was ever elected president, he would invade Iraq, and he wouldn't just make it a hundred-hour war like his daddy did. I mean, his daddy blew it. He had all this political capital saved up, and he blew it because he didn't go all the way to Baghdad. So, I mean, you know, Bush was all about 9-11. 9-11 is what made Bush. You got that Cindy clip? Is that what you were looking for? Yeah, here, here's Cindy Sheehan quoting, quoting George W. Bush, well, quoting Mickey Herskowitz, George Bush's autobiography uh, author, quoting George W. Bush. As a matter of fact, in interviews in 1999 with respected journalists and longtime Bush family friend Mickey Herskowitz, then-Governor George Bush stated... One of the keys to being seen as a great leader is to be seen as commander-in-chief. My father had all this political capital built up when he drove the Iraqis out of Kuwait, and he wasted it. If I have a chance to invade, if I had that much capital, I'm not going to waste it. I'm going to get everything passed that I want to get passed, and I'm going to have a successful presidency, end quote. And that's what he did. And, uh, yeah, I mean, he didn't get everything passed. He wanted to get passed. But remember 2005, right after the election, he says, I got all this political capital. I'm going to spend it now on privatizing Social Security. And the Democrats stopped him. But he tried. So, anyhow, he was all about the war. So why did Bush and why did Cheney, 
who even, you know, brought down a full CIA operation, probably led to the death of several people, uh, you know, certainly harmed our counterterrorism operations by outing, outing Valerie Plame. Why did Bush, why did Bush and Cheney not show up at the 9-11 memorial this morning? I don't think that, uh, you know, either one of them are ever going to show up at anything in public. I think, you know, for the same, you know, for the same reason that Condi Rice is not speaking, you know, giving that commencement speech. These people are war criminals. It's not a matter of a difference in political opinion, the way Michael Smirkanish was trying to characterize it yesterday. They're war criminals. You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. Call 866-987-THOM. It's why George W. Bush is printing, is painting pictures of himself in the shower in the bathtub, trying to wash the blood off himself. He knows it. Jeannie knows it. He's, they're war criminals.